I see that five on Shinohara's face, Ishida. I see it. You're not, you're not hiding that. I, I see that five directly on his cheek. As soon as I turn the page and I look down at Shinohara and I saw that five on his face, I'm like, oh, we're getting back into tarot cards, are we? So, if you did not know, fellow Chibits, Ishida loves using tarot cards every so often. He loves putting them on different characters. And I have actually neglected to talk about the tarot cards quite a bit, even though there has been quite a few tarot cards already on some characters through the journey of this series already in Tokyo Ghoul Ray. But I wanted to mention it because it was incredibly obvious just on Shinohara's face. The tarot card 5, I'm like, oh my god. And also a couple other Chibits pointed out that there was a tarot card on Hanabi's jacket that was a 10 or 11. Now, the scandalations, for instance, the rolls and the actual translations, for some reason the jacket varies. Like, one uh, scandalation, it looks like it's a 10, and then if you go to the rolls, it looks like 11 or whatever like that. So, I don't know necessarily if the tarot card on Hanabi's jacket is uh, 10 or 11, but either way, there is, once again, another tarot card in the chapter. So, so, moving past that, besides the little, you know, hints that Ashita loves doing every so often, this chapter, for the most part, another build-up, set-up chapter, and it looks like next week we are going to finally get the auction. We're actually going to get where all hell breaks loose, everything's going to go down, Clown is going to be there, we're going to have it to where Ogier the Tree is there, the Doves are there, I mean, we're going to have the Quinkies there, I mean, everybody is going to be at this auction like just so much shit is gonna hit the fan and at the end of the chapter they give us a little bit of a tease you get to see Suzia in his gothic lolly outfit and I'm like what the fuck like Suzia looks like a gothic lolly and I'm like yo 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 what the fuck like Ashida Ashida why 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 like I, I can't speak like why 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 you give me Sasako and now you give me Suzia like what the fuck and, and then the Mutsuki, and I'm like, yo, Ishida, stop it. Just stop that shit. Because, because y y damn, those traps. Those traps are too much for me. Just like, damn. So, anyways, the, just this chapter, okay? The main thing you can get from this chapter is the slight setup and build up going on between Mutsuki, Hanabi, Suzuya, and then you also get a little bit of build up between Toka and Shinohara, which was quite surprising. Now, I don't know if everybody actually managed to realize this or not, but in this chapter, it was hinted at, Ashida hinted that Toka has been visiting Shinohara constantly and delivering him flowers because there was one panel right before Toka popped up, like right before she popped up and before, you know, Psycho and and Shirazu actually left the room, you saw how Ashina made a panel specifically for, like, this uh, flower pot. That's exactly what he made. And next page, or uh, two pages after that, you see Toka holding a flower pot with flowers in it. So, it just shows you that Toka has been coming to visit Shinohara and deliver him flowers all the time. So, we'll have to see more into that, but that definitely is probably going to play a role later on down the future, but we'll have to see. But slight little hints there from Ashita. You gotta love Ashita. So... Other things, oh yes, the knife throw, the knife throwing with uh, Suzuya and Mutsuki in this chapter, like, oh my god. So, Suzuya is just slinging four fucking knives into the air, and he's grabbing these knives like a badass and shit, I'm like, dude, like, I, I would be scared as fuck to even try to attempt something like that. And then what was funny, as soon as I fought that in my mind, he stated something about fear, and so did Mutsuki, and I'm like, oh my god, like, so, his overall conversation, like, Susie S states, like, fear can either destroy you, or it can help you. For instance, if you have fear, it can either help you cook, it can help you move forward, or you can have it to where fear will completely destroy you to where everything around you gets burnt to the ground. And so, overall, Susie's little perspective of fear was just quite interesting. But then we find out that... That amount of, like, little dialogue, that saying was actually from Shinohara that told Suzuki in the past, and I'm like, oh, fuck. So, it was a very, very slight sad chapter on top of that, because Hanabi, I think, I hope I say I say his name correctly, but the dude's called H-A-N-B-E-E, -E. I think that's how you say it, is Hanabi? I don't think it's Hanabi? I, I don't think that's how you would say it. So, Hanabi, that dude, he has some form of slight foreshadowing that was placed in this chapter like he states that if I had something like that happen to my teacher like my sensei you know Shinoharu you know in a coma if something like that was to happen to me I would blame myself that's what Hanabi says in this chapter and what's really interesting about that is that I find it very weird how he has a tarot card on him he has a tarot card along with why he's saying stuff like this in this chapter 
And if you go further than that, if that was to happen to him, he would blame himself. So doesn't that sound like maybe Suzuya might has something happened to him? Because, I mean, he's about to fight Big Madam. And we know Suzuya is going in for some fucking revenge. He is going in for revenge. And so, is Hanabi letting us know that Suzuya might go in a coma or get hurt for some reason? Because... That overall little bit of dialogue that Hanabi decided to say in this chapter felt like it, either a death lag or, you know, just some form of foreshadowing to something. So, we'll have to see. We really will have to see on that. But, overall, the chapter, it's a very simple chapter. You have very cute psycho moments once again in this chapter. Oh my god, I love her. The little gamer talk or the Keiko talk with the practice. Oh, wordplay, that, that was freaking funny. Like, when she was messing with Chirazu in this chapter about practice, I was laughing my ass off because she's like, oh, Keiko's here! And, you know, it stands for practice. I'm like, oh my god. Just like, Psycho, I love you. You're, you're best girl. I, I'm sorry. I, I know it, but I mean, hey, like I said in last week's chapter, Sheena knows what's up. Psycho best girl because he even has her as his thumbnail pick, like his little pick. So, yeah. Overall, good chapter. I enjoyed it. Very fun to read. Go give it a watch. Read yourself. This definitely is, once again, another build-up chapter setting up for the day of the auction. And once again, Ashita decides to remind us at the end of this chapter that November 11th is coming. And remember what I said about three weeks back. Remembrance Day is on November 11th. Kaneki. White-haired Kaneki coming back, centipede, yes, yeah, stuff like that. So, you all have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.